afternoon. So my presentation will be um, about how to shrink uh, from a global village to a European platform. Just a minute. Yeah, exactly. Can we switch it on? Thank you. Um, and we start with a little video. What you just saw was um, the last year's Werklights Festival moved to Sociosphere. We also had moved to Ecosphere and then moved to Body Data Sphere. Three exhibitions in a row, each weekend uh, changing ex exhibition, and uh, the conference New World Disorder, where actually Chris Sauter also contributed. Here you see the website of our festival, Move To. You find it at move2.werklights.de. And it is um, yeah, like a database with um, several keywords you can click on, and then you'll find um, rather of, um, one of 44 of the productions of the European Media Art Platform or um, um, lectures which we still have online from the conference. Um, but I want to take you back now into uh, the ancient times, uh, the analog times, Long, long ago, once upon a time, in the age of digital dawn, we had an adventure in time and space. And what you see now is um, actually where Werklight started in 1991. Uh, me and some fellows started a rural art commune in the village of Werklight, so actually outside of the village. We reconstructed that old um, compound here. Um, we started the association there in the village and we created uh, biennials um, um, and festivals. Um, this is an example of later on then in Halle, the Angst Festival. So this is about um, the history of uh, Werkleit Center for Media Arts. Um, we founded the association to promote and realize media art projects. And we are very much in a hybrid in between the media art worlds and the documentary film world or experimental film work. Um, so we were probably one of the first centers based not in the city, so instead in a small village, um, uh, starting uh, with BNLs. And we created the Media Lab in 94 with uh, production facilities in times where a gigabyte did cost you 1,500 euros. Um, and also uh, in 94, we connected our village um, to the university via internet and probably had been one of the first or maybe the first village um, with internet connection worldwide, so therefore I called it Global Village. Um, in 95, we started the European Media Artists in Residence Exchange because we needed, or we had the, the urge to, to um, have um, an international exchange, so we wanted to invite international artists to our place and together with um, former Halltime Vestars, which doesn't exist anymore, run by Mike Stubbs um, in um, Kingston upon Hull and the Intermedia Department followed by the Center for Culture and Communication in Budapest. Uh, we started our first network as early in 95, as I said. So we are celebrating actually tw 25 years of media residencies. But in 2004, uh, my center went from the village to the city of Halle for various reasons. Uh, we changed the Biennale later on into an annual festival with a bit of a more flexible format. And since 2011, um, uh, we are running the Professional Media Masterclass 
for regional um, documentary and experimental filmmakers. And yeah, um, like in, in 2019, at, you know, the Berlinale Film Festival, um, we won, like the, the silver beer was won by our Imaro residents, Malo Abramovic, and the golden beer was won uh, by our uh, masterclass alumni uh, for Umbra um, in the short film sections. So this is where our center is based now. Um, and now I turn to the European Media Art platform. So the idea actually to create this kind of um, network is the one of collaborating media labs uh, to host and exchange media artists from all around Europe and to benefit from our all different diverse cultural back, backgrounds uh, to exchange uh, competence and knowledge and infrastructures. Um, also, we have the opportunity to exchange cultural programs and stuff amongst ourselves. And of course, very important, um, we started to apply to the European Union's cultural programs. Um, and uh, I'll tell you how they work a bit later on. Um, just now to show you how it started, 95, we had these three organizations, and now I overstepped all the decades in between where we became European Media Art Network, where we exchanged with uh, two institutions in Mexico, and then afterwards with uh, three institutions in Australia and in Canada. Um, to become to that uh, state where we are now, um, because we just signed the contract for the next three years with Creative Europe for the European Media Art Platform Expanded. And that is um, what you can see here, 15 organizations around Europe and uh, three organizations um, changing every year as a guest country. Um, and we start actually, which is a bit funny for us with FACT in Liverpool. Um, because they had been a long, long years member, but because of Brexit, um, they can't be anymore. So it's the last year where we can send artists to FACT. This will followed by Hexagram, which presentation you just saw uh, next year in, in Montreal. And uh, in the last year, um, 2024, um, we will send artists to um, HONF. Um, actually, these organizations will select the European artists they want to host. Like, all of our members um, make their own decisions, but we come together, have a common jury with about um, um, 500 applications. Here's a list again of all the, the members we have. Some you might know, like Ars Electronica or the um, um, Onassis Culture Center, but they're also like, we just had the jury at Neme in uh, Cyprus, which is a really great organization it's run by an old couple. So we have big and small organizations involved. Um, and Worklights, we are kind of the platform organizer, but we are rather one of the small organizations within this consortium. And um, we will do our uh, final show not again in Halle. What you saw was like the former headquarters of the Stasi. And Worklights is well known for reconstructing old buildings, going into, squatting the place. Um, not really squatting, but um, getting permission to reconstruct for several months the buildings to find the perfect uh, setting for each artwork. Um, uh, and that was quite exciting to be in the former Stasi building. Uh, but uh, we decided now that each of the members are doing small, um, smaller group exhibitions, and we will do one in conjunction uh, with the Transmediale at the Silent Green Cultural Quarter 24 in Berlin. So um, maybe if you're running an organization, it might be interesting to know a bit about our structure. So as I said, we have, um, Werklights is the, is the organizer, then we have 14 members, and we have three guest organizations. But we also aim to have about um, more than 100 partner organizations. I think we're up to 19 now in the moment, um, associated partners. Um, and as associated partner, which is really easy to become, you just send a logo and a contact you will have um, uh, the, a login for the submission um, database, which also has keywords to do researches. Um, and you can apply for a presentation grant for between 1,000 and 2,000 uh, grant. We just have a call now and for end of the month if you present one of the EMA productions. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have in the moment, we, had 40, or we have 44 productions. The problem I have to talk later on is that um, the UK productions we can't support in the moment anymore. So it, you can select from around 38 um, productions, I think. Um, also, you can participate in online workshops. That's a bit similar than the Sparks um, 
project you presented earlier. We're just starting with this idea, um, uh, which we um, um, developed last year, also due of Corona, um, and um, we'll continue this. Uh, so this year we will have workshops done about preservation of media art, um, on collections and museums for media art, um, and on uh, for social, social media, always run by a different uh, one of our member organizations. Um, what we do is we do a European-wide common call for applications. Uh, so the next one will start with us Electronica in September, uh, with deadline probably uh, by end of uh, November, where artists apply online. Then we come together and have a, a common jury conference hosted by one of the members. Um, and uh, as soon as we have the selection, it's like what the state we are in the moment. Uh, on next weekend, I, I travel to Zagreb where we have our networking conference to meet the selected artists, um, which is hosted by another member, this time a container in Zagreb, and also combined with some public parts of the conference. Um, this also will be hybrid, so partners can um, uh, access uh, via Zoom. Um, artists, yeah, um, working with digital media, they have to be based in Europe or have a European passport, are eligible to apply. Now, this is a very, very, um, for me, a very um, wound or a, a, a crucial problem we are facing right now with um, Creative Europe because they said uh, they only would accept um, uh, European artists, and we did a make a call, including UK. We wanted to include always a guest country artist. Uh, they completely forbid that, um, and also uh, we had to cancel support for our Russian partners. Um, I find it personally completely scandalous, and we are going will go to do a petition, um, and I hope many of you can join that against this um, kind of um, European fortress uh, policy. Um, as I said, yeah, the, uh, you're, you're entering with a new proposal, but also with three reference works, and all of them uh, are tagged, so you have to give us some keywords, and that is useful for our partners to, to do researchers if they want to look for AI or for um, um, inclusion uh, or any kind of thematics and topics they can check the database. Um, uh, the next three years, we will work around uh, knowledge transfer between collaborative projects. So we are not only asking for one artist, but we are asking for artists to collaborate. So rather, they had to be collectives or multiple, um, or they, they want to work with a local artist or artist group. Uh, the collaboration is a very essential uh, thing this time. Um, we do further promotions of the works to festivals, galleries, museums, mostly um, uh, via our website, emare.eu, but also through personal contacts. And as I mentioned before, we will have 30 presentation grants within the next three years for the partner organizations to choose uh, some of the works. And I mentioned the workshops already. So uh, what we aim for is to support artistic research and production with a focus on arts, science, and technology, uh, to foster international knowledge uh, transfer, um, encouraging the interdisciplinarity, uh, promoting emerging artists is also an important task um, uh, for us, and sharing our knowledge with artists and organizations. And generally, like all of you, probably it's about raising awareness on potentials and risk of technology, um, and also trying to find projects which offer alternative solutions to our societies. So what we offer is, uh, as I said, collaborative residences up to two months with a grant of 4,000 euros plus 2,000 euros for the collaborating artists per project, then the travel expenses of 1,000 euros, a project uh, budget up to 4,000 euros, free accommodation, free access to the technical infrastructure of the host, a consultation assistance or tutorial help, at least one presentation at the host or at um, a national um, festival or exhibition, and then your optional selected for small or big group shows, shows at all uh, platform members, and um, as I said, via the presentation grants, optionally by the partners if they apply for. Here are three examples of uh, commissions Backlights did. Um, Matthew Gingold, an Australian artist, uh, did the face orchestra, a light and sound installation. I don't think I have the time to go into the details of these ones. Um, I'm very proud about Piki Day. You might have come across the names Christoph Wachter and Matthias Jud. 
They did this at uh, Marienauer Center in 2006. They got the Golden Nika, I think 2017, 18, or 19 for uh, Can You See Me? Um, and at Piketty, they kind of circumpassed the internet censorship by translating the World Wide Web into images uh, in, in those days, and went to China and served in the internet cafe, Tiananmen Massacre, a Democracy, or Free Tibet, and all possible. And um, the recent um, a work developed in our center was a hijacking of a computer game, a short film um, by the Austrian um, um, artist group Total Refusal, which will be premiering at Locarno Film Festival soon. This is our website um, where you can find uh, all artists participated since 95. So we make a division um, between the sections of EMAP and EMARA. Um, and you can't apply for presentations of the Imara artists, that's too old world work, but of all the uh, former Imab artists, you find the works there, you find the members and the partners, um, we find news like uh, us uh, presenting now at Ars Electronica. Um, actually also there are two works, uh, Imab production at the Santa Monica, um, one by Kasia Molga, and one by the, the How to Make an Ocean, and uh, the other one by Robertina. I think it's a follow-up project of um, Aqua Forensic, also an early commission. Um, in the moment, we're also online at the IMAP Garden at the New European Bauhaus Festival or at IMAL Brussels um, presentation, and, uh, and the How to Make an Ocean was uh, nominated for a Cole Prize. Um, yeah, uh, I have another uh, one minute of video uh, by Ars Electronica 2019 showing with some more works. I don't need the music that much, so. Um, this was Chimera Rosa's transplant, uh, May the Chlorophyll Be Within You, a long years project, um, uh, including um, um, that was before us uh, the injection of chlorophyll. Um, at Kosnikova Institute, um, and then we kind of continue to support them later on. The Eye of the Other by Daniela Mitterberger and Tiziano Derme was also presented at the um, Vienna um, Architecture Biennale uh, last year, I think. This um, is a quite a, a, a new uh, guy um, on, on the spot, uh, Berg schmidt -Husen. Speculative Artificial Intelligent, uh, Intelligence was exhibited at ZKM. Recently, um, Jonna Moll's The Hidden Life of an Amazon User all around. She was also covered by German magazine Spiegel, um, making aware of the um, uh, oxidant um, uh, carbon uh, emissions by, uh, via the net. And Online Culture Wars by Disinnovation.org. We also um, supported a stage of that project. You might have seen that map before mapping all the memes. Um, that's Marco Barozzi's uh, clams, which react on the uh, pollution or the, the, the water quality of the rivers. So that was at the Danube uh, at Ars Electronica. It's always adapted to the local um, one. So actually, um, coming to the end of the project, I just wanted to, yeah, uh, one more time, to um, remind that we have to do something against this kind of uh, exclusion of artists from other parts of the world um, um, because uh, yeah I'm, I'm not really happy that we have to write that this is only for EU artists I'm very unhappy with it indeed um, and as I said sometimes we have to take up uh, our voice on a political level and if there are enough institutions um, going against that we can uh, really change these kind of politics. So if you want to contact us, um, here is um, the website, emare.eu, you just saw, or the one of my center, Werkleitz, in Halle, Germany. I also have a nice postcard of the Akea bot, which I have seen in one presentation, uh, I think yesterday, of someone. Um, yeah, this is also having our contact, and thank you for listening.